Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you a, a tutorial video about how to prune climbing roses. So this here is a climbing rose. It's uh, probably about five years old and pruning, uh, climbing roses should be pruned at least once a year um, but also regularly deadheaded in the summertime. I'll just come around here so you can see a bit more of the structure of the rose. Now climbing roses are a lot more vigorous than, um, than ordinary roses. They'll grow up to 10 meters or 30 feet for some varieties but most of them will stay a bit smaller than that. They're very similar to the rambling rose although the rambling roses they tend to have flowering in a big flush kind of June to July time and then that's them finished flowering for the year whereas climbing roses when they flower there's not as many flowers on at any one time but they repeat flower and so they start flowering in June and they flower right through to the frosts and it's actually January at the moment but this one still actually has some flowering so you can see here it's been a bit mild and the, the walls provide some protection there is actually some old flowers here so these would have been open probably back in um, in the December time also around here I believe there's a few you can see that one there trying to open up but generally the time you want to do the pruning is winter you want to wait for the the plant to be dormant most of the leaves should have fallen off sometimes if it's a mild winter or depending on the variety of rows it might be like this one where it keeps some of the leaves right into winter so you want to make sure you, you wait until most of the leaves are fallen off but you don't want to wait too long otherwise what happens is lots of new growth starts and you want to cut it before the new growth and the reason you want to cut it in winter is because the plant's dormant but, but you can also see the structure a lot better because there's no leaves in the way and the reason you want to do it dormant is all the energy from the plant most of it's taken back into the roots at this time of year so if you do any pruning you won't weaken the plant you'll keep it really strong and vigorous and it'll grow back nicely so you can see here it is trying to grow it's been a very mild winter so there's a few new growths coming but it's still got the old it's still got some of the old leaves so sometimes if you have a warm winter it can start growing before the leaves fall off but generally the leaves fall off so first so when it comes to pruning a climbing rose it's a little bit different to pruning a normal shrub or bush rose so the difference with the climbing rose is you keep a lot more of the, the structure you don't cut it down as hard and what you go into is you kind of try and prune it into a, a shape where there's enough space between the branches and you want to attach it to any kind of supports or trellising because um, climbing roses don't naturally hold on to anything what they do in the wild is they're scramblers so they scramble onto other plants and shrubs and trees you need to provide them with a bit of extra support so there's a few wires here the um the first one's right at the bottom but there's no branches to tie in you can see this big branch here that's been tied in in the past and it's got all these side branches coming off it so you, what you want to do is try and tie in some new branches so there's this one here you want to tie try and tie this in onto a new horizontal support like that and the reason you want to tie them horizontally is if you have them growing straight up what happens is the plant has hormones which detects which buds at the top all the energy goes to this top bud and that top bud just keep growing really fast and really tall and just grow lots of leaves and stems and you won't get many flowers whereas if you pull this, the branch down to its side all the, the buds have equal amount of hormone and so all the buds will then grow into, uh, into new shoots and then they will have lots of shorter shoots but these shoots should have lots of flowers on them so an example of that is this one here this branch has been pulled lower down all these side shoots will then come out and then they've had lots of flowers on them most of these ones have been deadheaded throughout the summer and if you do deadhead them they'll keep flowering again and again so for example this one here you can see when it was cut off there deadheaded and then it's grown again and flowered a second time so what you want to do is get nice horizontals and what I'll do is I'll start some pruning now and get it to a cleaner shape and I'll do a time lapse so you can see the process I go through what you're looking for when you're doing this is if there's any dead or damaged bits like this one here you can see it's been been snapped off and just started to die off you want to cut that back you don't want any dead or dying because that's not going to help at all it's just going to get in the way other ones you want to cut off are very small weak shoots so you see like these here these are never going to come to anything they're not if they're going to grow at all next year they'll just have leaves they won't have flowers they're not strong enough to flower so you want to cut them right off at the base to, to discourage them from growing at all and then working along the main main um, main structure of the, the, the branches, what you want to do is you get all these side branches that have come off from previous years and you want to cut them back to about a centimetre or a third of an inch from the, uh, from the main trunk and that will just allow them to regrow and to put on the same amount of growth as they did last year. Um, so you want about just a little bit of stump like that. You can go even closer as well. Um, 
but about a centimeter or something is is good. At least you want to have at least one bud left on the uh, on the stem so it can grow out a new branch. So I'm going to go over this and start cutting back. What I'll also look for is any branches that can be tied down. So this one's a good candidate because this one comes off from here and then it comes on quite close to uh, a cable so I can tie that one in. Other areas like this where it's very congested, you might want to remove branches completely. So for example, this one growing upright, there's not really anywhere to tie it in because everything around, all the other supports are completely tied up with branches. So this doesn't need to be kept. So that will be cut right off at the where it comes from the main stem. Also, if you've got any really old weak growth, but you've got a nice new suit coming up from the base that's going to replace it, then it's often good to remove the old suit because what happens is each stem will only live a certain amount of years until it gets old and then it kind of gives up and a new branch will come up from the base to replace it. There's no examples on this uh, rose this year, but some years you get a good example of, um, of a fresh new shoot coming up. So all you would do in that instance is if I take this one for example, imagine this is an old shoot that, that's quite weak, you would remove this one and then if there's a new fresh one coming up with had a lot of vigor and energy, we'll just take this one for example, even though this one isn't, and you would just take that and tie it into the, the structure that this old one used to take and that just renews the plant you give, and it has a, a few more years of life. And I'll also do this side here. This is also a bit of a tangle, so there'll be a lot of cutting back to do. There's not as many cables on this side to tie things in. Uh, there's a few branches like this one here, which could really be tied in. So what I might do is I'll need to get some more cabling at some point. I probably might not be able to fit into this video, but I'll tie this down further. And there's a few other ones here. There's not really many cables on this side, so I could do with some new cables. Especially up here, you can see there's a nice branch there that could be tied in as a horizontal. So when it comes to tying up the branches, I would always recommend using twine, something that's quite soft and ideally made out of natural fibers. So this one is made out of jute, which is a, a natural fiber from a plant. The reason for that is it's quite soft. So as the plant grows, it shouldn't choke it too much, but also these are biodegradable whereas plastic can often perish. So these ones, these plastic ones here, the sun will perish these and they'll eventually just turn into thousand little bits of dust and go into the soil. Whereas this will rot down to compost eventually, once it, once, after two or three years. Also, it's good often to put something like twine on instead of metal or, uh, or plastic because it doesn't last as long. And the reason for that is if you forget about it, it's not going to start choking into the, uh, the stem and cutting the the sap supplied to the stem, it will uh, just rot off and then you just have to retie it again. It doesn't mean you have to retie it more regularly, but it means you don't have to worry about it being uh, choked off by anything that's been left for too long. An example of that is you can see this one here, there's a bit of a, a gap there where there was a, a, a wire choking into it. So that's why you don't want to use metal ideally or plastic. If you can go for a natural fiber and then after two years, two or three years, it will rot off. And by that time, you'll probably find that your um, trunk is quite strong. You've got good strong stems on it. And they might even hold themselves up by that point. And if they don't, then you can put something a bit more sturdy on them because these ones don't really grow much. So metal support around a thick uh, stem like this isn't such an issue as if you put a metal support around a thin stem like this, because if it grows, then it will cut in. Now, when you're pruning the rose, you want to make sure that you've got a good pair of secateurs so that you leave a nice clean cut. What you don't want is cuts that look like this, which are a bit damaged because that will let um, infection and disease come in. You want a nice clean cut just like that so you don't get any infection. And the other thing of note to make sure you, that you're wearing some very thick leather gloves. Some gloves are going to give you protection because most climbing roses are going to be covered in thorns like this. And these will give you some really nasty cuts you'll quite easily end up with some the thorns stuck in your hand and you'll have to get tweezers to pull them out. So always make sure you're wearing a good pair of, uh, of thick gloves if you're working with roses, because they're easy to get cut and, uh, and scratched. So I'll set up the tripod now and give you a time lapse of me starting to prune it and tidy it into a nicer shape.
So that's all now tied off. As you can see, it's looking a lot neater. This is roughly the size of the pile that's come off of the uh, off of the, the rows. You can see now there's a lot more space for the plants for the branches to grow in the new year. Now there's still a lot of work to be done with this. You can see, for example, there's two here. They come up vertical and don't really go horizontal. The plan for these is come spring, once I put on new growth, I can then train the new growth into the side. I'm not sure which one will go where. Probably this one will go towards the left. That one should hopefully fill towards the right. But we'll just have to wait and see when that grows up. Same with this here. I've got two. And two in this area is really too many. So um, you don't want two coming along the same line. So what I'm going to do is see which one has the most vigorous growth going towards the left. And I'll probably keep that one. Um, hopefully it will be this one which is further left already. That will keep growing along. This one here can fit up this small space in between the two branches. And this more mature one down the bottom here, although it looks really bare now, that's quite a strong vigorous branch that will put on a lot more growth. And for example, this one that's bent down here, the reason that's been bent down is to try and get a horizontal along this section. So there's a bud just here on the um, on the bottom of it. That can get trained along the bottom, help to fill some of that level. And part of the reason is this one's quite an old weak stem. This is not looking likely that it's going to put on a lot of growth um, in next year. So that might die off soon. So if this does die off, this is kind of an insurance one to kind of back it up. That'll be trained in. So that's the kind of thing you want to do. Make sure you've always got um, a couple of other ones ready to replace ones that are looking a bit weak just in case. And I'll just take you around the side now so you can see the difference of the pruned and the unpruned. So you can see it's a lot neater now, held back against the wall. There's nothing really coming out of the wall, not getting in the way of the pathway. I think, as you see here, this one has got quite a lot. This one does need quite a lot more work, as I say. It needs new uh, supports being put in. I'll give this quick tidy up and I'll show you an after photo. And I'll try and get the uh, supports in, um, possibly not in this video, maybe in a later video. And then finally, I'll leave you with some photos. And uh, if I've got some video footage of when I pruned this about two or three years ago, I did give this a good prune then and tie it in, but the problem was my sound on my microphone wasn't working, so I couldn't use the video footage. But I can at least show you some of the clips uh, without the sound, and so you can see how much has grown since then and how pruning it in tight and neat can really help with the flowering. And I think you'll also have some photos of this in midsummer, so you can see what it looks like with some full bloom.